Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sanj and today we're going to do something a bit different. So normally I do videos about ETFs, personal finance investing and new and exciting stuff. But in this video, I wanted to actually look at what are some ETFs that have shut down that are you know, no longer available. Because I was quite curious, like I guess in the world of finance, when something you, you know, you can't buy it anymore, it's sort of taken off the front, it becomes a back book thing or it's just taken off altogether. And I thought in the world of ETFs, you know, is there some way of knowing which ETFs have actually shut down? Are you curious to know which ETFs have shut down? What type of ETFs do tend to shut down? What are some of the factors around it? Now, I'm not going to answer that all in this video, but what I've essentially done is looked at ETFs that were around in 2020 and then compared it with ETFs that are currently around in 2021 to see is there a bit of a difference? So, you know, and what's no longer available? And I'm actually excited on this broad topic, so we won't do it in this video, but in a future video, I'm actually going to try and make a bit of a prediction on ETFs that may not be around a year from now, maybe in late 2022. So, and then we'll see, was I right or was I wrong? You know, can you actually predict which ETFs might shut down? So that's going to be interesting. But in today's video, we're just going to look at which ETFs didn't make it into 2021, so to speak. So let's get into it. So if you're curious in terms of methodology and you want to know how I actually went about this, what I essentially did was I went into the Australian Stock Exchange's monthly investment products update. And they basically put out a, a, an, a, an update every month where they say, this is all the ETFs that are available that you can buy. And this is sort of their performance and funds under management and whatnot. And I got the one from October, 2020. And I got the one from October, 2021. And I did a bit of a comparison. So if you are curious, this is what the report looks like on along the left, along, or in terms of rows, it's got all the different ETFs. And along the right, it's got all the key parameters or key details about it. Funds, in it, funds under management, funds under management change. And this is sort of how I found out about the VEQ losing quite a lot of money. I did a video on that in the past. And, you know, it's quite an interesting thing to look at. And what I essentially did was I got on the tools. I did some Excel work. It's always exciting when I do Excel. Sometimes it goes well. What I did was essentially listed all the ETFs that were available in 2020, October, and then listed all the ETFs that were available in October 2021, and then looked for the difference. And this is the list. Now, I'm not going to say this is comprehensive because this is only between October and October. Other ETFs could have dropped off in you know various time periods and somehow I may not have picked it up. But this list of seven ETFs is what I found that were there in October 2020 and were no longer there in 2021. So you've got a broad brush. You've got two ETFs from ETFs, the Enhanced USD Cash ETF, Global Core Infrastructure ETF. You got two from beta shares, an agricultural ETF, currency hedged, and a commodities basket ETF, currency hedged. Interesting, you know, I would have thought agriculture is actually, you know, could be a popular topic over time. It's a bit of a thematic ETF. Commodities, again, I guess it's not a hot topic these days. Everyone's interested in crypto. I did do a video on that. Check it out. The other thing to note is at the time of shutting these down in October 2020. So I don't know when they shut down, but when I looked at them in October 2020, they didn't have a lot of funds under management. This is why I sort of often say is if you're going to invest in an ETF, check the funds under management, which is essentially market cap. Have a bit of an idea to see is, it, is there a lot of money in there? Because... If there's not a lot of money in there, that could be a bit of an indicator of which way that ETF is going. I'm not saying it's be all end all, but I'm just saying it's, you know, be careful of it. The other thing to note is when these ETFs sort of dropped off, they kind of, they dropped off altogether. Like when you go to BDSH's website now, under thematic, which I imagine is where QCB would be and some of those BDSH's products, they're not there at all. And there's no like historical, at least from what I could find, you know, ETFs that have shut down. And, you know, these are not flash in the pan ETFs either. So I just kind of, when I Googled around, all I could find was some stuff from Best ETFs website where they had done some reviews on it. And you can see QC, QCB, it wasn't a flash in the pan. It had been around since 2012 and, you know, sort of gradually going down. I don't have the funds under management number, but that was probably also going down over time. And then similar with Core, it was kind of, this is just the price. This is the, the price point of it was you know maybe going down and for whatever reason they decided to shut it down so i thought this is interesting that you know it seems like they're all always reviewing their etfs i guess they're always looking at the commercials of their etfs to determine is this still a viable product for us 
but it's kind of scary that even an ETF that's been around for nearly 10 years can be shut down if it's not going anywhere compared to an ETF that's maybe done four or five years. Now this whole topic of ETF shut down has sort of got me interested and I am going to do a video in the future where I'm going to sort of look at the ETFs in late 2021, early 2022 and try and sort of make a bit of a prediction. It's gonna be for fun, purely for entertainment fun purposes, but I wanna look at you know, some factors. I'm gonna look at maybe funds under management, I'm gonna look at the fees. I'm gonna say, look, based on the funds under management and the way the flows are going and the fact that it's got such high fees and the general thematics around it, this ETF may end up not being around in you know 12 months. And then we'll see if that is true, because you know, if I put it out there, I'm putting it on paper, so to speak, on video, We'll come back a year from now and we'll see, is that actually the case? Because I think that will be interesting to see if if you can, to some extent, sort of see the late stages of an ETF. And, you know, if I'm interested, what I might actually do is buy some of these ETFs, the ones that I think are going to shut down, just so I can see what happens when you write an ETF into the ground, <laughs> when it gets shut down. What, what actually happens? Because I've never had that happen to me, and I'm not saying... That to say I'm amazing, I'm just saying I've not been that unlucky in my ETF investing because I generally do the big broad ones. So it'll be interesting to actually hold an ETF, small, small amount, I mean, just the minimum $500, and then see what happens when it does get shut down. What kind of communication do they send you? What kind of options do they give you? You know, how does it all work? So I'm really curious to see how that will happen. So please do consider subscribing to see that in future videos. And hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.